Chapter 41, Magran. Angel stopped reading. Enjoying it? she asked. There was a roar from everyone listening. Angel was about to continue when Darling rushed up to her. Angel belt bent down to listen to the little flamingo. We have news, she said, standing up. Magal has used his giant powers to become gigantic so as to help Petrel's family, but he's been hurt. Stella and the Time Fairies ask that we send strong healing magic to him. There were muffled sounds of concern from the audience. Blizzard moved over to stand with Angel. Everyone stand up, please, he said, and looked out and look out to the horizon. Close your eyes and imagine our healing indigo seas forming a huge cloud way up in the noesis. There was a hush as everyone did what Blizzard asked. Now, continued Angel, can you see the cloud? Yes, came the hushed reply from everyone. Now picture it moving across time and space to the island of flames. Let it take its time, gathering energy and love and peace as it goes. The only sound was the sound of the ocean sucking in and out on the beach as if it was a as if a sleeping giant was crouched down there, dreaming the most beautiful dreams, slowly breathing. Okay, said Blizzard, picture Magal. Everyone do that. Angel continued. Now imagine that cloud opening above him and raining down healing, love and magic energy all over him, saturating his body and his mind and his soul. Everyone did as they were asked. The sea continued to breathe, the gulls squawked, and a deep peace fell upon those standing on the observatory's deck. They all stood for about half an hour, and then slowly there were little rustles as people sat down or moved around. Finally, Angel and Blizzard said, Thank you. Well done, everyone. What do you think? asked Angel. Bedtime? No, roared everyone. Angel smiled. Of course it isn't. Not yet, anyway. Here we go. Angel started reading. Chapter 41, Magran. Once he'd gone through the silver mirror and was in the city of Magran, Toll felt completely at home. As soon as he saw Queen Coldheart, he announced that he'd been sent from King Grank and Great and Very Grank and Very Great to check on every king and queen in the land. I'll need everyone to assemble outside your castle in 15 minutes. I've been ordered to make sure you're all really kings and queens, announced Toll in an imperious tone. It worked like a charm. Queen Coldheart grovelled on the ground in front of Toll before running to announce the surprise inspection to everyone in the kingdom. Toll quickly found one of the Queen's servants, a small woman who looked a little sly. Excuse me, said Toll, can you let me know the whereabouts of Imen City? I need to know the quickest way to get there. Why do you want to get there? asked the servant. I don't think that's any of your business, said Toll. I'll need to know your name before I can give you any information, said the servant abruptly. Goodness me, thought Toll. The servants are as rude as their employers in this place. My name is Anatole Dew, said Toll, pulling his shoulders back, and I'm very well and I'm a very well respected inspector. So answer my questions before I report you to the Queen. The servant looked very interested in Toll and not at all afraid. Getting to Immense City is easy peasy, she said. Just tell Queen Coldheart that you'd like to meet her parents. I'm sure she'd be only too pleased to introduce you. And they live in Immense City. 
but be warned, the Queen's parents are very callous. Thank you, but I don't want to take the Queen with me. Is it possible for me to go alone? asked Toll. Not from here. I've heard that you can get to Imen City from Lost Candleys, but I'm not sure, said the woman. If you please, sir, I must get back to my work. I'll be dead if the Queen catches me standing about talking. Certainly, said Toll. You're right. Just one more thing. If I could get to Lost Candleys, how would I go from there to Imen City? I've heard there's a house there, and each of its mirrors leads to a different place. But who can say? Maybe it's just a story. I really must go. With that, the servant disappeared through one of the doors. Toll moved quickly back into the main room, hoping to reach the mirror before Queen Coldheart returned. To his surprise, however, she was already back, and she wasn't alone. There beside the Queen stood none other than Toll's mother, wearing a rather gaudy pearl necklace. Ma, Toll began before remembering to play the part of inspector. Ma, must have come as quite a surprise having an inspection at this time of year. Not at all, said Queen Coldheart. We've been having them so often lately. Most inconvenient. Have you indeed? asked Nell in a very regal tone. I'm not sure if I could settle in a land where there are regular inspections. I'm a queen by birthright, and I'm tired of having to prove it. To be honest, I find inspections such a drag. We all do, moaned Queen Coldheart. But what can be done? Quite a lot, screeched Nell. I'd like to meet this new inspector. As far as I'm concerned, the young man before us is the only trained inspector I've ever met. And now I know King Great and I know King Grank and Great and Very Grank and Very Great very well. Do you really? asked the cold hearted Queen, looking most pleased. Well, I can arrange for you to meet the other inspector. He's holidaying with my parents in Imen City. Actually, you probably know him if you're close to King Grank and Great and Very Grank and Very Great. The inspector is also related to the king. In fact, I think he's his son. Really? asked Nell. How interesting. Toll looked at his mother, wondering what she was up to. I'll need to spend some time alone with this young man before we leave for Imen City. Do you have a private study to which we could adjourn? asked Nell in her most proud voice. Oh, my dear, I have 57 private studies. Take your pick, said Queen Coldheart, opening a door into a corridor full of other doors that led, presumably, to 57 different studies. Thank you, said Nell. The young man and I'll be a few minutes. The young man and I'll only be a few minutes. Could you have a carriage ready for our journey to Imen City? Oh, of course, smiled Queen Coldheart, leaving the room. Nell moved quickly to Toll's side and whispered, Don't speak to me out loud. The castle's almost certainly bugged. Wait until we're outside.